I swear. Many of you guys have probably been waiting for this video for months. But at last, here it is. I hope you enjoy it. Since this is a well anticipated video, I've decided to take a slightly different approach this time around. After a bit of preparations, I've created two plans. The first plan, called Plan A, involves downloading the game from Epic Games Launcher and simply running it. In order for this plan to work out as expected, both Battle Royale and Creative Mode must be playable. You can't have neither of them, or just one of them to be playable. If Plan A doesn't work out as planned however, then I have an emergency plan called, well, Plan B, and it involves, um, it's actually a secret. Okay. Let's try out Plan A. Right, so I spent 3 hours waiting for Fortnite to download, as you can see I have it installed and you can also see it in the quick launch bar, as I did in my previous video where I tested Rocket League, memory reduct is once again a necessity due to, well, me having 4GB RAM and a bloody hard drive, which, I have to admit, will also be a huge limiting factor, but still, it shouldn't run that badly, right? You know what, I will also go to the config file, and see what can I tweak there, so stay with me. I'm also going to run the game at like half of 6 40 by 480 in windowed borderless mode. So I'm also going to lower my desktop resolution using the method from my Fall Guys video. We are done with the optimizations. Let's finally see how it runs. Okay, we are in. So as you can see it runs quite well, at least in the lobby. Also here are the settings. Of course 6, 40 by 4, 80 resolution, and windowed borderless mode as I mentioned. The 3D resolution option. I can't lower it from 56%, so I can't run Fortnite at a resolution as shitty as the one I used for Rocket League. Everything else is lowered down, and of course I will be using performance mode as you can see. Everything clear? But, let's test Battle Royale first. One eternity later. So, after one eternity of waiting, we are on the battle bus, and we are already getting zero FPS. Now that's what I call a smooth experience. Also where's the island and my character? I only see some little mountains, but at least my character finally appeared. Also I set MSI afterburner to count the super high FPS. Yeah, I think the Celeron is too weak to load the island. So I guess we are slowly falling into the- Oh wait never mind I was just looking at the wrong direction lol. Also why did I drop out of the battle bus so early? I didn't press anything there. Oh well, I guess we'll have to swim a bit. Also, on top of single digit frame rate, there's some weird flashy graphical glitchy mess going on. I wonder what's causing it. I guess it's fireworks. Is that how her coach taught her to swim? Are okay. So the Intel Celeron N2840 can't decide how she's supposed to swim. Understood. Insurance can't rebuild the tilted towers without my help. 
Well I can't help them, it's not gonna work out well, as my FPS are simply too low. Although I suppose that after a few moments the game should start running smoother, as right now the laptop's hardware is probably still loading something from it. Well I hope the game smoothens itself out sooner, because I'm starting to feel a bit of nausea from this lagginess. Can I get on the pier please? Oh god damn it. A few moments later. I can't get on the pier, so I guess we are going for the sand. Anyways, as you can see, the game is actually starting to run a bit smoother. Hell at one moment it even hit 36 FPS. See, I was right. We just had to wait a bit for the hardware to complete its loading. And just as I said that, it completely froze with the sound of a ticking clock. Um. Hello. Is it going to respond? Or did Fortnite completely give up on trying to run on my crappy system? Are okay. So it was just trying to process the store my notification. Understandable. Yeah, those graphical glitches aren't going away, are they? Let's gather some wood. And also let's look down and up, to see how many FPS we get when doing so. You know what, never mind, it's not going to get smoother, to our disappointment, but at least there's a party stall right here, so let's go vibe to the cellar. Oh no there's a sniper hunting for me, I better run away from him as fast as possible. Wait, I see a car. Get in the freaking car come on, there we go, and, oh boy, oh dear, as we are trying to drive this car, and as that guy is hunting for me, the performance is getting even worse, like I'm starting to have a headache at this point. This is running much worse even than Rise of the Tomb Raider, that game also runs at a single digit frame rate on this laptop. But at least it runs with stable single digit FPS and not mega stuttery single digit FPS like goddamn crap night battle royale. Yeah I'm just, I give up, I'm just going to let that kid end my suffering. Much, much later. Yanaya, thank you for finally ending my suffering, whoever you are. Also I placed 21st. What the hell, I actually made it that far into this match. Whatever, bring me back to the lobby. Please cuz I can't stand this anymore. Much 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 later. What the frick the game crashed while it was trying to go back to the lobby lol. Fine, let's restart it. Right, so we are back in the game, and now let's try out creative mode, as I heard that it's way more lightweight than battle royale, and I know many of you want to see how it runs, so let's go. Okay, still loading, and actually, that's not so bad, in fact that's super good compared to what we got in the other mode, at bloody last a relief for my eyes, look at that, 30 plus fps. Oh yeah, I mean the frame time isn't ideal cause of the stupid CPU, but if you have the same specs as mine, and you want to download and try out Fortnite in 2022, then creative mode is the way to go.
Again let's look down and up. Let's destroy this house for the sake of gathering all the beautiful material. Don't worry, I will replace it with a cheaper built one later. And for the sake of convenience, let's build some ramps to the peak, you know, in case tourists decide to come here. Whoa. So in fly mode, you can no clip through the terrain. And now let's replace the house that I destroyed. There we go, I'm pretty sure it won't collapse anytime soon, and even if it does, insurance will take care of the mess. So, yeah, creative mode is actually playable on the Intel Celeron N2840 and 4GB a freaking RAM. Of course the performance could suffer as you add in more, and more stuff to your world, logically, but it doesn't matter, because having both creative mode, and battle royale, was the necessity for plan A to be successful, and since battle royale is completely unplayable, at least for me, it might run better for you I don't know, I unfortunately have to say, that plan A failed to fully achieve its objective. Because I don't want to disappoint the audience, that means that I have to switch to the emergency, classified, not intended to be used, plan B. Yes you guessed it right, we are going to try out GeForce Now, the cloud streaming service that many talk about and use, the blessing to low end gamers from Nvidia themselves. Fortnite battle ready, GeForce performance you can touch, wait Fortnite on your phone. 1000 plus games ready to play, GeForce Now connects to digital PC game stores so you can stream the library of games you already own. Cloud gaming on all your devices, GeForce Now instantly transforms nearly any laptop, desktop, Mac, Shield TV, Android device, iPhone, or iPad into the PC gaming rig you've always dreamed of, play the most demanding PC games and seamlessly play across your devices. Well let's see if it can transform my Intel Celeron N2840 4GB RAM Lenovo IdeaPad 115iBY into a Lenovo Legion 5.
Okay, so this is how GeForce now looks like. Very neat. You've got the game sorted by genres and other categories. I've created an NVIDIA account and I've also connected my Epic Games account with GeForce now. So think we are ready. Let's go. A few moments later. We are back in that game baby. This is how the graphics settings will be set with GeForce now. I don't recommend you touching them, as these are the settings recommended by Nvidia. Now let's get into a battle royale match, and as you can see, it's running like absolute butter. You can't see the FPS, but it's running at constant 60 FPS at 720p guys. So you can already understand how GeForce now works. Basically, the app streams from one of NVIDIA Corporation's computers to your system. And that's why it's called Cloud Gaming. So this is actually a benchmark of whether or not the Intel Celeron N2840 can handle Cloud Gaming at 720p 60fps. And thankfully, despite being so slow, it can still handle it. As you can see, this is a reason why I wouldn't like using GeForce now for my future benchmark videos. Because if Fortnite runs at 60fps using it, then the N2840 would handle any other game that I run with this streaming service app at constant 60fps. But I only did it for this video, just for the sake of not leaving my audience very disappointed. So thank you for your understanding. Also, GeForce now has three inconveniences. Two of them are related to the free membership, and these are, number one, you can only play for one hour per session, and you have to restart your session once you reach the time limit, but thankfully the amount of sessions you have is infinite, however that also leads to inconvenience number two, it can take quite a long time for a session to start, and that depends on the game, and how many gamers are still playing before you, and finally inconvenience number three, the worst one for many of you, you need a decent internet connection to use GeForce now. You can't use your shitty internet connection because the gameplay will be choppy as heck. Really sorry but it's true. And yes, for paid games, you do need to buy them in order to play them from GeForce now. You can't simply use the pirated versions of them. Another thing that I will mention is that after you close GeForce now, a small background process called NVIDIA Container gets left behind, which you can disable using the task manager if you want. This is not an inconvenience, but rather a nitpick, as NVIDIA Container only consumes 4 megabytes of RAM and normally doesn't slow down your system, so that's up to your preference. But if you don't have a decent enough internet connection for GeForce now, then I have an ultra top secret plan called Plan F, which involves either paying for a proper internet connection, or just forgetting about 14. I'm serious, there are so many other awesome games out there which you can try out, just check out the channel gameplay I see you. So, that concludes this video. Thanks for watching, the result wasn't all that satisfactory, but that is probably cause of the 4GB of RAM as many people would probably write down below. But I hope you enjoyed the video nevertheless. I will see you guys in the next video. And until then, goodbye.